Hey guys, uh, Cecil here once again. Um, before I started really getting into this video, I just wanted to apologize in advance for the shakiness of the video. For the subject I'm going to be talking about today, it's going to kind of require me to move around a little bit, and I don't have a good way to capture video at the moment. So just if you, the screen's a little shaky or not steady or you don't get the best picture of the screens I'm going to be taping, um, I apologize in advance, so just kind of bear with me. Um, as you can tell by the title of the video, I'm going to be talking about an accessory for the original PlayStation called the PlayStation Link Cable which is this bad boy right here. Now what this essentially allows you to do is to hook up two PlayStations, which I have right here, and play them on separate screens. Um, you know, back in the day, um, in the like 8 and 16-bit era, you either had to play all on one screen or, you know, multiplayer, if you remember, you know, games like GoldenEye on the N64. You had to play four-player split screen, and a lot of people had fun with that. But you know, as time moved on, especially now that we're into the HD gaming age with like the PS3, the 360, and even the original Xbox, PS2, and the GameCube, um, now you can hook up systems via LAN and or a crossover cable and play them that way. So you don't really have to you know deal with uh, you know split screen so much anymore. But this was kind of the evolution of going to that you know multiplayer format hooking up multiple systems and that was the link cables on like the PlayStation and the Saturn the N64 never had that um, they did have uh, online gaming through stuff like X-Band or you know with the Saturn with the Netlink but that really doesn't so much count if you're talking about local local player so in just regards to the PS1 link cable since the PlayStation 1 was so popular even though this probably wasn't the most widely distributed accessory it had a good amount of support. I would say, if I can remember the link, the list of games I saw, there was about 25, 30 games that supported this, and it was a good array of titles. Um, you had fighting games like Bushido Blade 1 and 2. 2 is the one I'm going to demonstrate today. Uh, they had good racing games like Test Drive 4, I think it was, Wipeout, um, Ridge Racer Revolution, um, the Armored Core games, a lot of the PS1 Armored Core games supported it. So there was a good array of games that supported this thing. And uh, if you were able to get two TVs, two PS1s, a link cable, and two copies of the games together, you know, it was quite a, a fun little uh, time to be had, especially since you'd, everyone could have their own screen. You could be across the room from each other as long as your PS1s were relatively close together and, you know, play, uh, play multiplayer without having to worry about the other person, you know, seeing what was on your screen. So I'm just going to kind of demonstrate this a little bit and what you have to do to get this all up and running. It's pretty simple. It's no more difficult than hooking up just a general console. Obviously, you'll need two TVs and uh, two copies of the games. Now, today, PS1 games are pretty easy to burn and play. So, you know, acquiring, you know, copies of these games, as long as you look at the list, it shouldn't be too difficult. Um, the link cable might be a little bit tougher to find, um, but it, it's not overly expensive unlike the 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 Dreamcast or Saturn Link cables which are a little bit tougher to find and I'll talk about those in a little bit basically you're going to need two PS1s um, now you need the older gray station models you can't use the newer looking white PS1s cuz they took out the serial IO port on the back of the PS1s so you hook up the the systems like you would normally and in the back of the PS1s there's the there's a serial I.O. port. It's not the not the bigger door that like the Game Shark went into, but the smaller one next to that. And you hook those up, and once you got that all hooked up, you're pretty much good to go. It's pretty simple and easy to set up. So let's just go ahead and fire up both of these bad boys real quick. I got this PS1 hooked up to the HD TV, and I've got this PS1 kind of hooked up to the smaller uh, uh, HD ready. Uh, 4x3 set that has more a lot of my classic consoles on it. So uh, as we'll fire up, um, I'll t as these games fire up, I'll talk a little bit. Um, the the they also supported the uh, there was link cables for the set the uh, Saturn and the Dreamcast. There was never an official U.S. link cable, as far as I'm aware. The only link cable that came out was in Japan, and there weren't a lot of games on the Saturn link cable that were supported. I know Gun Griffin. And I think Virtual on One, I think one of the, the Japanese version of Daytona USA CCE supported it. It was only like a half dozen games. So um, if you can track it down, the, the Saturn Link Cable is a little tougher to find than the PlayStation 1, but it's not overly expensive either. Um, now, the one you're going to have a hard time finding, it's at least, especially even though it was released in the U.S., was the Dreamcast Link Cable. Now, the reason with the Dreamcast Link Cable is so hard to find is because... A lot in the last few years, I've noticed like Virtual On has become a lot more popular, and people getting like the twin sticks and hooking up two Dreamcasts and playing Virtual On or Atari Tangram 
uh, two-player link cable. So Dreamcast link cables weren't overly even popular even when they were out, kind of like the VGA boxes, especially the Sega one. So they're kind of hard to find, and I've noticed prices on them have gone up quite a bit. So to get the uh, Dreamcast link cable, you might that's probably going to be the most expensive out of the bunch to, to find. There's not really a lot of demand for the Saturn link cable, even though it was only ever released in Japan. There are a lot of third-party options, too. So... There are third-party link cables you can get for the systems too, and they work just as good. So even if you can't get a first-party one, you know, don't feel so bad. So let's go ahead and try and grab two controllers here. I'll probably have to put one on each leg and try and play multiplayer Bushido Blade by myself. So kind of just bear with me a little bit. So load 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 so what you're gonna wanna go do on here there's a special section called two-player link battle mode and you kinda gotta bring it down to there and you just kinda gotta hit the button on both systems and it'll pretty much waiting for the challenger and it'll pretty much just as soon as you hit the button on both it'll link them both right up it's pretty straightforward so let's go ahead and pick just kinda generic I don't have the the um memory cards in here for these at the moment so just kinda have to deal with the basic characters now either person can pretty much control this you know the options in the screen so either person on either screen can select the uh, the venue and their character and all that stuff and you can pause either player can pause it so there's really no like one console doesn't have control over another at least with Bushido Blade and uh, I love the Bushido Blade loading screen. It's just all uh, blood, blood, blood. This, you know, this was kind of, I don't know how controversial this was back in the day. Um, so the link cable mode for Bushido Blade um, actually is a little different. It's, it's a first-person perspective. You kind of got, on your particular screen, you can kind of see the grid outline of your character. And on the other screen, you can see your opponent. Um, so when he gets the basically the same thing, he just kind of on his other screen, he just has you and, and, and a grid on him. So, you know, it's just, it, it, it's a lot of fun. I mean, it, you know, versus, you know, when you normally play the game, you kind of got just both characters on the side of each other. This one is, um, you know, it, first person perspective. Now there's no way to, to switch it. When you're in link cable mode, There's only, you only get the first person perspective, which is fine. But this is, I, I think it's a fun and unique way to play Bushido Blade. It's definitely different, and you gotta, you know, use a different, a little bit more strategy because obviously the the big thing with Bushido Blade is the one hit kills. So you, it, from a different perspective, first person, you, you gotta really be more careful. It's not as easy to to guard yourself and everything with it. But yeah, this is just kind of, you know, Bushido Blade with the link cable. You can you can still run around and and do all the fun stuff in Bushido Blade like you normally would. Obviously, the graphics on the PS1 aren't going to be the best, but yeah, it's 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 a great game. I mean, the Bushido Blade games are two really great games from Square, and uh, that you know have kind of not been released. I forget the. I know the company that developed them uh, kind of split away from Square back in the early 2000s after like Kengo Master of Bushido came out, which was kind of the 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 uh, spiritual sequel to the Bushido Blade games. But these are two still really solid. Uh, PS1 fighting games, and it's cool that they supported the link cable. You know, although I definitely would also recommend uh, Ridge Racer Revolution, you know, kind of classic uh, uh, racing on this. And the Wipeout games, Wipeout and Wipeout XL, both supported this. And uh, yeah, there's just a lot of great games. So that's kind of just a, a bit of a basic look at the PS1 link cable. Again, I apologize for kind of the shoddy looking camera work but I just wanted to kind of get a quick video uploaded here and and share this with you on how to to kind of get this all up and running um, I'll kind of just do a quick look down at the consoles real quick just so you know what port I'm talking about and if you look up on the, the playstations here real quick it's just if you look on the back it's just the serial IO port there's the the big door that goes to the game shark or whatever other uh, accessories that would go in the parallel port and it's the it's the port right to the right of it it's called the serial IO port so, and again, like I said, you do need two of the uh, basic play, PlayStations, which are dirt cheap. The nice thing is this setup isn't going to be overly expensive. You know, used PS1s are like you can find for less than 10 bucks. The link cable shouldn't be more than 10 or 15. And, you know, and, and the, ga the games will probably be 
a little bit more harder to track down, especially two copies of. But you know, if you're really desperate and you're not, you know, too worried about piracy, burning games is is really easy. So, and getting them to play on the PlayStation nowadays isn't too tough to do. So that's you know the PS1 link cable in a heart shell or in a, excuse me a heart shell a nutshell. So you guys take it easy, and I will see you next time.